Hey guys, I'm Amatasha and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to implement ARKit, which is the official Apple's API for developing augmented reality applications for iOS starting from iOS 11. Uh, and uh, I, I, ARKit actually works on Unity as well as for Xcode. And we'll be learning how to implement ARKit on Unity specifically because I've made a lot of tutorials on Unity, and Unity I feel is a lot easier for me as well as a lot of newbies. Because um, normally there's a lot of uh, learning curve uh, associated with Xcode, you have to understand uh, iOS development in the first place. Now, with Xcode, I mean with Unity, it's a lot easier because there's a lot of GUI based stuff. I mean, uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, so first thing you want to do is you, you you guys have to remember like there's two or three re reasons. I mean, there's three things before let's let's be, before we begin. I mean, the first, I mean, I've I've already made a video about how to create an augmented reality application with something called Vuforia before, and you might want to know like why are we really doing this and what's the difference between these two. Basically, it, it allows you to create markerless AR, and what it basically means is, is with with Vuforia, Vuforia was cross-platform, which means that it can run on any app, I mean, any operating system, be it on Android or iOS. But for this, it's going to work only for iOS and only starting from iOS 11. And I have an iPad which doesn't support iOS 11, unfortunately, which means I didn't test my application before I did this tutorial. But don't worry, I did enough research uh, before I, I ran this tutorial. Anyway, so Markerless AR is basically something that does not require you to have some. Uh, printed image or something like that to augment objects on top of your uh, objects. So, for example, uh, normally on Wu4, they need to have some kind of an image or to show to the camera, and then if it detects that object, uh, only then will actually start augmenting your objects on top of it. You, you did have some other markless error APIs which are either expensive or they're actually really difficult to implement. And that's why I didn't bother making up a tutorial for it. Uh, later down the line, and ARKit is a lot simpler for it. And two, the tracking is really good. It has got it's got a lot of cool features, especially the tracking itself. If if you actually if you take your phone and you put your uh, 3D model, like for example, like some anime character or something, and uh, if you put your phone there, for example, if there's a saucer cup with a T, and if you keep moving your phone uh, further and further away, the the, the size of the T gets, I mean, the cup, the saucer, and the T gets increased, I mean, bigger, so that you're able to see it, and plus it, it looks a lot realistic. So, and also it, it perfectly uh, detects your plain surfaces and it augments things on top of it, which means that you don't really need some printed image to augment things out of it. And the last but not the least, uh, obviously, uh, is it works with Unity, which means that it's um, a lot easier. So, anyways, let's get into it. Um, first of all, you would need to have macOS, uh, and you can't test your applications on Unity. Actually, that's what I, that, that, that was my third point. You can't really test your applications on Unity Editor, or even for that matter, on the Xcode iOS simulator. I don't know if you're able to do, but I, I really don't think so. You can do it. I actually have not figured that out. So. Um, so I actually, this is the second time I'm making this video, by the way. Uh, so this one here is going to be the thing you need to download. First one is the AR Kit plugin. It's officially available on the Unity Asset Store. Now, since my internet is extremely slow, I am opening this up on Google Chrome, but you have to go to the Asset Store. If you don't know where it is, go to Window and go to Asset Store. I assume you guys have some knowledge about Unity because uh, I will be moving a little faster on this in this particular video. The next thing you want to do, download is any uh, 3D character. In my in my channel, I made a video about how to create your own 3D character. Assuming you do, you have no uh, modeling knowledge, uh, what I mean by that is you don't really need to know how to rig and do all that crazy stuff. Um, it will automatically create. Oh, sorry. Actually, before I made this video, I wanted to show you guys with a uh, how to augment uh, a fun, I mean, an anime character. But I was actually kind of really scared if my video is going to be taken down for some copyright claims, although I have all rights to uh, do it because, by the way, I, I took it from a legal source. I'll tell you guys what. The thing with, if you want to learn something, you can download a lot of great assets from Google. I just typed in, you know, Goku 
which if you don't know is a Dragon Ball Z character and, and I downloaded the 3D asset which is an OBJ file and I drag and drop it here and then I tested it, it works so I mean if you do find some of them, you do need to remember the terms and conditions though if, if they don't allow you to put it on the assets, I mean on the play on, use it for commercial purposes, don't even try to do it because you'll get screwed somewhere either on the Apple Store uh, review process or somewhere anyway so that's about it now let's get started up the first thing like I said first download these two the link will be in the description uh, okay the other 3d model this thing is still loading but I'll tell you guys what my internet is kind of really slow so I'll tell you guys what you have to do is download these and import it once it, once it's downloaded you'll get a prompt that says import uh, you'll have to import by the way before even you get started you have to go create a new project I completely forgot that so create a new project uh, it, it doesn't matter you have to create a, you have to create a new project but uh, it'd be better because things are a little cleaner here and easier to navigate so create a new project if you have some acceptable assets uh, you can import it uh, otherwise it's okay you just start from a blank slate it's okay if you don't have anything here uh, anyway, the next thing you want to do is go to build settings and make sure the, the selection the unity symbol is on the iOS. If you don't, click on this, click on iOS, switch platform. And the next thing you want to go to, you want to do is go click on the player settings, go down and make sure your camera usage description is is set to something like AR. Don't select the AR baby while deploying it. For now it's okay, but uh, the next bundle identifier is your unique identifier on the Apple Store and version that doesn't really matter. The most important part is this one target minimum iOS version that's going to be 11.0. Uh, that is as of the date that you see on the description. Uh, AR Kit and iOS 11 is still not released as of the date I'm, I'm making this video, so things are going to be a little buggy here. So, anyways, let's get started out though. Once you've imported it, uh, and you gotta download some assets, no, some uh, 3D assets. That the the, the assets that I'm gonna play with is called Allosaurus. Now Allosaurus, again, this is also available on the asset store. It's free, and the link to download this will be in the description of this video. You gotta click on that, click, uh, and open this up on the asset store, and actually import it. You will get true folders. Not you'll get all of these things here, Unity Particles, uh, Unity AR Shaders, AR Kit Scene, AR Balls, and you know I get AR Test, that is actually my uh, test that I, I I did before uh, shooting this video, I mean, not shooting the video, but making this tutorial. Go to Allosaurus, this is my other uh, thing here, so you click on the prefabs, you can see all of my beautiful dinosaurs down there with the animation there. Uh, okay, so let's actually get started up with the ARC itself. Now there are a lot of things that that go into uh, the back end or like the the I can say the back end of the ER kits. Now we don't want to actually get into uh, the dependencies of ER. So what we'll do is we'll actually use something called U Unity AR Kit Scene. Let's click on it, and that uh, this is just nothing. So. Now here, you'll see a couple of things here that uh, you see a, a, a random cube with some uh, X, Y, Z axis representation and some random cube and a light. And along with that, you on the left side, you, on the hierarchy, you can see a lot of elements here. Now, the only things that we're going to talk about in this tutorial, in this video, is the directional light, the random cube, and the uh, hit cube parent. And there are other things that are... are are definitely useful but I mean not useful but they're definitely a part of our application but um, these are the three things that we're gonna touch and the other things we're just gonna leave it as it is because uh, my agenda for this tutorial is not going to be uh, to teach you guys that there are a lot of tutorials already all not a lot of but there are like two tutorials one is there's if you go to the the Unity AR, AR kit scene here, they have some examples here that we already have on our project. So there's a tutorial explaining you guys how to make a AR application with which you can actually draw uh, and that looks really cool, I mean, uh, but I assume a lot of people have already done that so I'm not going to be doing that. There's actually a tutorial explaining that process and there's another video by the f most famous person for AR that is Matthew Albert. Um, he, he explains how to like use ER kit to 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 use a uh, character and how to make it walk 
and uh, how to actually modify certain basic controls of, uh, of the AR default scripts to, to basically, you know, if, if you want your character to move in certain places and do the, all that stuff, they're, they're complex, but that's how, it, that's, that's how those things work. In this particular video, my agenda is to help you uh, understand from a game developer's perspective and uh, how to basically make things work. I mean, how to... This is a very, like, from a very fundamental perspective. Like, for example, I'm just going to help you guys augment certain 3D objects, and that's all from the implementation perspective, but uh, I'll also give you some ideas and hints on on how to make games with this. Like I said, it's it's really easy with Unity because it's obviously a game engine in the first place, so it's going to be a lot easy for you to develop games as opposed to if you're creating applications. And if you're really good with Xcode, then it's your uh, choice. So. Anyway, so about the implementation, let's get into the thing. So, uh, here's the most important thing, it's called HitQ pattern. So, if you've noticed, the, uh, if you've actually watched the WWDC's uh, AR kit demo, what it does is, if you, uh, if you actually take your camera, it'll actually start detecting all the plane services on your camera. And then, if, it's, if it detects a cube, or I'm sorry, a plane surface if you tap on that particular plane you can detect I mean you can actually generate uh, any 3d object now like in this particular project we have inside this uh, parent object we have something called hit cube which means that in if you actually test your application now um, you're going to be uh, spawning cubes and obviously the size doesn't really matter because obviously it's going to scale as as you keep Push, I mean, taking your device further and further away. So, uh, whatever object you put under this hit cube pattern is going to be appearing when you tap on a plane surface. So, but it's not that simple. I mean, you just add one single element, I mean, one single script on top of it and do some a little bit of drag and dropping, and that's it. So, I'll explain you guys. And the next thing you want to do is you want to check out something called random cube. Uh, this thing is nothing but you can have any any number of uh, elements outside. So this is going to be appearing irrespective of whether you tap on anything on your screen or not. Anything that is uh, outside your hit cube parent is not going to look for a plane surface. It's just going to appear on top of it. For example, if I test your, I mean, if I test the application, now if you look at the camera, now if I actually start, to, uh, if I start running the application now, this particular uh, zebra cube with texture. I mean, this cube will actually start appearing right here, and if and that will actually not move because it doesn't have animations though. Uh, and uh, this way, you can actually have some, uh, I mean, like an airplane or something flying. And those things will not actually require you to have some plane surface because those are not coming under the hit cube pattern. This is actually a, a separate method inside the AR kit. Uh, AR kit API. So, <laughs> anyways, so let's get started off with this. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to AR LSRS here under the prefabs. Just drag and drop LSRS inside the heat cube parent. Um, uh, the reason I'm gonna drag a prefab instead of 3D model itself is because it comes along with the animation. So, I don't wanna uh, just go to position and uh, let's keep it in 000, zero, zero and uh, that way it's in the center. And uh, the size, like I said, doesn't really matter all that much. I'm going to delete the hit cube because we don't want to have the cube uh, appearing on top of it. And the next thing you want to do is you want to search for something called uh, hit. You are going to add component here, and you want to search for something called hit test. Okay, just type in hit test, and you will get something called Unity AR hit test example. And you want to click on that, and it looks for hit transform. Basically, it means that uh, what where do you like? What is the parent object of this? Now, the parent object of this is hit cube parent. You want to drag and drop it here. Now, with this, if you actually build your application, uh, go to build settings. If you've configured this properly, like I mentioned, go click on build. You'll get an Xcode project, uh, and you gotta open that up by. Uh, if you go to your project here, this you'll get all these bunch of files as opposed to just getting you know a dot app file or dot ipa file. You get all these Xcode well, a bunch of files here. Don't worry about this. What you have to do is open up Xcode and make sure the Xcode is 
uh, starting from Xcode 9, I guess. My Xcode is uh, Xcode 9, yeah. This is a beta, which means that there are going to be a lot of bugs. But anyway, so once you open this up, it's going to take a couple of minutes or seconds or whatever, depending on the computer speed. Uh, you want to make sure the team is selected to whatever is your uh, Apple developer account. You do need an Apple developer account. I'm not really sure if you need the paid version of it. I have actually, I'm a, a paid member, so uh, to submit your application to the Apple Store, obviously, you would need an Apple developer account, which costs $99 every year. And uh, once you once you signed up there, you just gotta click on uh, the add an account here on the team section here. Log into your profile and download all the provisioning profiles. And if you select it, you'll actually get this thing set up. Now, plug in your USB, and if you click on this play button, uh, you'll be able to install your application on your phone and test it and uh, deliver it. Whatever you want to do it, and you can also export this now as an API. Oh, sorry. Does an IPA and then uh, uh, deliver to the Apple Store. Now, obviously, in the in-depth explanation on how to export uh, your applications to the Apple Store uh, is is available on YouTube. There are a lot of people who are doing this already, so I don't want to dwell too much on this because there's already enough content here to deliver for you guys. So, yeah. Like I said, now uh, a little bit of context about how to develop games with this. Now, if you go to the the camera parameter, there's a couple of ideas that I thought. Now you can delete this uh, random cube here. Random cube is not so important. It's just basically a cube. Okay, so you can have. I'll give you some couple of ideas here. Now you can create a first person shooter with AR. Now you can do something called raycast on here. You can go look for it. Um, the process is simple, except that the camera is going to be, you, you can't really test it on the Unity Editor, like I said, so um, place your gun in front of the camera and uh, allow some recasting and use some uh, collisions for your objects. Now, whether it is if you want your enemies to spawn on the plane surfaces and when they tap on it, you gotta place this inside the hit cube pattern. Or if you want them to generate rent all, all over the space, you don't really need that. So, um, anyway, so here's a point. Uh, you don't really need the hit cube pattern for this. You can delete it if you want to. And there's another example, something called uh, AR Shadows. This one, yeah. Unity AR Shadows. Now, this will actually even detect your shadows. Uh, generate the shadows for 3D models. I don't know what's the difference between this and that actually personally, except that it actually has an, a, an additional prefab added to the project here. So, um, I, I've seen these videos about it, but uh, yeah, anyways, this doesn't make any sense so, for this tutorial. Anyways, uh, here's the point. Uh, you can actually make your game just like you would do for any other thing, except that the camera is going to be different. So, uh, the process is uh, very similar whether you're creating a VR application or AR application. The only thing that's going to differ is the camera itself. And obviously, it looks a lot cooler here. Now, you can actually put your enemies just like you would do on any other uh, game on Unity. Now, I've made a, 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 like a seven part series and a three part series um, about how to use Unity to create games. Now, those were for creating ball games but um, but you can actually leverage those concepts and try to build shooting a uh, first person shooting games now probably I'll make it crawl down the lane on how to you uh, how to create those kinds of games but for now yeah so basically I've given some ideas you can kind of like put some airplanes that with animations that they keep roaming around the camera or something like that and you gotta shoot those things and uh, with those, you can score points. There's some interesting ideas with the, that you could do with AR, and you could generate your famous characters or somebody that they, that the users can actually take a selfie with. For example, I don't know some anime character you're in front, like I did. Um, for my example, anyway. So that's it for this video. I hope I've covered everything. And uh, let me see if I've missed out anything here. Uh, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you if you like this video, please be sure to visit my website at harshow.in uh, and subscribe for more content. And uh, I shall see you guys in another video. Very soon. Thank you guys for watching.